Hi everybody, today we're working on a 2008 Toyota Camry. So we're going to do the front and the rear brakes. The pads are worn down about, there's about 30% remaining, but the rotors actually look really good. There's hardly any wear here and they're smooth all the way out. So we're just going to go ahead and reuse these. We could, we could turn these if we really wanted to or purchase new rotors. They're so smooth, I think uh, we're going to have no issues here just uh, reusing the existing rotors. When I take the calipers off, I, I will take it off using the inner bolts here. Uh, and that will, that's basically the same process for removing the rotor. So I'll go ahead and show you how to get the rotor off as well. So the way I got this Camry off the ground, it's got a fairly robust uh, frame rail under here. So I actually, I actually put the floor jack several, several inches behind where I want to put the front jack jack stand and then uh, if I lift it here this is plenty strong to lift up the whole car then I can slide in the front jack and slide the back jack in along this uh, frame rail so this car is really easy to get up off the ground all right we'll start with the front brakes first as it's the more simple of the two there's no parking brake stuff to deal with before loosening any bolts just stick a screwdriver in uh, someplace convenient and uh, pry the piston back into its space. So I basically want to retract the piston fully. So when we go to install the new uh, pads that we have the sufficient clearance. And I find that it's easier to do it this way than to try to re retract the piston once it's already off the car. Okay so it's stop moving so that means it's been retracted all the way. Okay next we'll uh, get in here and uh, remove the caliper and there's two ways to do this you could either uh, just remove the outer part of the caliper with these outer bolts uh, if you're just replacing the pads that's a that's a good option if you want to replace the rotor uh, then you can then you need to remove these inner bolts so these are on pretty tight so I'll crack them with a breaker bar All right, we've got both bolts off, so I'll just pick up the uh, caliper and kind of plop it on top here. And if you are replacing the rotor, on these Toyota cars, it's super easy. There's no retaining bolts or anything. It just comes right off. And so real simple, you just replace it. As I said, today we're just replacing the pads, so we've got our new pads here. This kit did not come with any um, uh, brake grease, so we'll, uh, you want to pick that up separately if your kit doesn't come with the brake grease. Okay, so what we'll do now is uh, just take our screwdriver, get the old pads out of here, and just kind of slide right out. You can see this car is a little bit interesting. It has um, spring clips to kind of push the pad in place. And also there's a, a squeak wear sensor on the outside edge right here. So we'll take one of the new pads here and put one of the squeak sensors. Keep track of the orientation. You want to put the squeak sensors on the leading edge of the, of the uh, brake pad. All right, so, so this is a little bit unique. Um, there's these retaining clips. One clip goes into each of the pads and uh, it kind of forces the brakes apart so they don't drag on the rotor uh, when you take your foot off the brake. So it kind of goes together like this. So you can see here how these funny clips go, go in. Usually what I can do is kind of slide the pads back in place like this. But because of these funny springs, I, I'm not going to be able to assemble everything inside the, this uh, housing here. So what I'll, what I'll need to do is uh, put the uh, carrier bracket back on and then remove the, the outside part of the caliper and then assemble everything around the rotor. So I'll, I'll separate the caliper from the carrier bracket. Put the carrier bracket back on the car. 
you want to get these good and tight. These bolts are probably around uh, 90 foot-pounds or so. Okay, so we've put the carrier bracket back on. Okay, we'll put a little bit of uh, synthetic brake grease on the contact points. Doesn't take a lot. And put these pads back in. Just slide them in. And remember to put the squeaker at the leading edge. And for the top, I'll kind of push down to get the squeaker to go in place. I'm going to put a little bit of disc brake quiet on the back here. All right, after we've slid everything in place, next we'll put these uh, funny clips back on. It's going to try to push the brakes back out of their slot, so you need about three hands to do this. After you put the clips on, uh, with your third hand, go grab the caliper and while squeezing on the pads, slide the caliper back on. So once you kind of snug down the 14 millimeter, you can tighten it down and the, the inside uh, portion won't rotate on you. Okay, so that's one corner. All right, now we'll turn our attention to the rear brakes. And the rear brakes are similar to the front, except uh, there's actually tiny uh, there's actually tiny shoes and there's a drum in here for the emergency brake. Uh, this will basically pull right off if you loosen the two inner caliper carrier bolts here, these 14 millimeter bolts right here. Uh, like I said today, we're only replacing the pads, so I'm going to loosen these two outer bolts to get the outer part of the caliper off so we can just get to the pads. We'll use the screwdriver to uh, fully retract the caliper piston. Okay, the piston's been retracted so we can remove these two 14 millimeter bolts and park it up out of the way. So it looks like for the rear we don't have those funny looking springs to deal with. We just need to pry the old pads out of there. Okay, so for the new pad, same thing. We'll install a squeaker on the leading edge. Put some brake grease on the uh, contact surfaces. Put it back in place. Repeat for the inside. Put a little bit of disc brake quiet. And put the caliper back on. Sometimes if it's a little bit tight, you can just kind of squeeze it. Sometimes the caliper will come back out and it'll be a little bit tight. You can just kind of squish it and it should go right on. There we go. Okay, that's done. And one thing we'll want to do as well before putting the wheels on is to go ahead and bleed these front brakes a little bit. If, if you don't have a helper, one thing you can actually do is uh, just do a gravity bleed. If you loosen this screw, the fluid will actually uh, flow into the caliper via gravity. It, it takes longer, but any air will come out and any old fluid will come out as well. Just uh, keep an eye on things. and. Uh, Tighten it back up after an appropriate amount of fluid has gone through the lines and through the caliper. All right, we'll gravity bleed these rear brakes a little bit as well. Oh, and one other thing, if you are doing a gravity bleed, you want to make sure that you have the cap off of the brake fluid reservoir. Otherwise, the vacuum will slow things down or even stop it. And be sure to keep an eye on the reservoir and top it off if it drops. One final step you always want to do after changing the brakes, press down on the brake pad several times to make sure it's nice and firm. You don't want to have any accidents backing out of the garage. All right, so that's pretty much it. That's how you change all four of the, the pads. And if you wanted to change the rotors, uh, you would be doing that at the same time as well. Ideally, what you want to do, especially if you have brand new rotors 
or if you're changing pad compounds, is to go out and bed the brakes. So this involves uh, basically heating up the new pad material until it's uh, gotten so hot that some of the material transfers on to the, the, the rotors. So go out someplace where you can get the car up to about 60 miles an hour and make some uh, hard stops, a series of about 10 hard stops. So you want to go out and um, get the car up to about 60, decelerate very quickly to about 20 miles an hour, and then uh, speed right back up again to 60, and, and repeat this about 10 times or until you start smelling uh, the brakes. Uh, and then after you've done this, uh, drive along at a normal speed without using the brakes as much as possible for a few minutes to cool them back down again, and that'll, that will bed your brakes in. So uh, thanks for watching. Be sure to click the like button if you like this video. Uh, subscribe for more. And uh, thanks and bye-bye.